For the last 30 days, I did something a little weird. I ate two tablespoons of honey. Every single day. Now, I figured I'd see some changes, maybe with my energy or on the scale, but here's the twist. What happened to my sleep was something I never saw coming. We've all heard it, right? Honey is the good sugar. The natural one, but is it really, or is that just great marketing for, well, sugar? I decided to stop guessing and put it to the test. I swapped out all the added sugar in my diet for a measured dose of honey to see what the science and my own body had to say. And the answer, I found, is way more complex and a lot more interesting than I ever thought. Think of the honey versus sugar debate like a movie. In one corner, you have table sugar sucrose. It's the classic villain linked to everything from obesity to heart trouble. In the other corner, you have honey, it feels ancient, pure, like something straight from nature. We put it on our yogurt, in our tea, and we tell ourselves this is the healthy choice, but is it? That's the question that kicked off this whole 30-day journey. The plan was simple. For one month, no obvious added sugars. No candy, no soda, none of it. Instead, I'd have a fixed amount of honey every day. I landed on two tablespoons, which is around 40 grams of sugar. To give you some perspective, the American Heart Association suggests men stay under 36 grams of added sugar a day and women under 25 grams. So, I was intentionally pushing that upper limit. I wanted to see if the type of sugar really makes a difference. I tracked my weight, my energy, how I felt, and at the end of the 30 days, I got my blood tested to see the real story. Before we get to what happened, we need to understand what we're even talking about. What's really the difference here? Think of table sugar, sucrose, like a simple Lego brick. It's just two smaller sugars, glucose and fructose, snapped together. Your body breaks them apart almost instantly, and you get a fast rush of both. Simple, quick, and very effective at spiking your blood sugar. Now, honey is more like a chaotic, beautiful mess. It's also mostly sugar, about 80%, but it's different. The glucose and fructose are floating around separately, not bound together, and that other 20%. It's water, plus tiny amounts of other things, pollen, amino acids, enzymes, vitamins, minerals, and importantly, antioxidants like flavonoids. The exact mix depends entirely on which flowers the bees visited. This difference in structure leads us to something called the glycemic index, or GI. It's just a scale from 0 to 100 that tells you how fast a food spikes your blood sugar. Pure glucose is 100, table sugar sits somewhere around a GI of 65, honey, on average, has a slightly lower GI, around 58. Now, that number can swing wildly depending on the type of honey, but on average, it's a bit lower. The idea is that this slower release of sugar is easier on your body. It's a difference, even if it's a modest one. Going into this, my research told me to watch to things in my blood work, cholesterol and blood sugar. Let's start with cholesterol. Some studies have hinted that honey might be good for your heart health. A big 2020 to review of 18 clinical trials found that, surprisingly, honey was linked to lower bad LDL cholesterol and triglycerides and higher good HDL cholesterol. The researchers thought this was surprising, given honey is mostly sugar. Their thinking was that if you're swapping out other sugars for honey, you might get a small benefit for your heart. But it's important to say other studies have found no real effect, so the evidence is still mixed. Then there's blood sugar because of that lower GI. I thought my blood sugar control might look a little better. Some small studies, especially with diabetics, have shown honey causes a lower blood sugar spike than the same amount of regular sugar. But, and this is critical, honey absolutely still raises your blood sugar. It is not a free pass. For anyone managing diabetes, it has to be treated just like any other sugar with caution. So, after 30 days, my own blood work came back. 
and the changes were tiny, almost nothing. My weight was exactly the same, my energy was fine. Honestly, for the first three weeks I was starting to think this whole thing was a bust. I felt no different, but I was wrong, the biggest change wasn't in my blood. It was what happened at night. About a weekend, I started noticing I was sleeping straight through until my alarm. I'm usually a restless sleeper. I almost always wake up around 3 or 4 a.m. for no reason, but suddenly I was out cold all night. It was so consistent that I started digging, and I stumbled on this fascinating, though still speculative, idea. The hypothesis goes like this. Think of your brain as a factory that runs all night. It needs a steady fuel supply, which it gets from glycogen, a sugar stored in your liver. If that fuel tank runs low in the middle of the night, your brain panics. It triggers stress hormones like cortisol to wake you up and get more fuel. This hormonal jolt can be just enough to pull you out of a deep sleep. This is where the honey theory comes in. The idea is that a spoonful of honey before bed helps top off that liver glycogen tank. Specifically, the fructose in honey is thought to be really good at this job. By giving your brain a stable fuel source, you might prevent that 3 a.m. cortisol spike and sleep more soundly. Now, I have to be clear, this is a compelling hypothesis, not established biology. Large-scale human trials proving this specific mechanism are still missing. Was this what I experienced, or was it a placebo? I can't know for sure, but the timing was impossible to ignore. And we can't talk about this without mentioning a huge catch. The type of honey you buy matters. A lot. That cute little plastic bear at the supermarket. It's often not what you think it is. Most commercial honey is pasteurized, heated to high temperatures. This keeps it from crystallizing and looking cloudy on the shelf. But that same heat can reduce some of the beneficial compounds, like enzymes and antioxidants, that make honey special. Raw honey, on the other hand, isn't heated like that. It's just strained. It keeps its natural goodies. Studies show raw honey can contain significantly more antioxidants than processed types, and darker honeys are often richer in these compounds. Even worse is adulterated honey, it's a massive problem where honey is secretly mixed with cheap syrups from corn or rice. These products are nutritionally very similar to just eating plain sugar syrup. They're missing the potential benefits of real honey and just add to the same health problems. Choosing raw, unpasteurized honey from a source you trust is the only way to know you're getting the real deal. It's wild how much is hidden inside the food we eat every day. I've done other deep dives on foods we all think are healthy, which you can check out, but I want to know about you. Have you ever tried swapping sugar for honey? Did you notice anything? Let me know your experience in the comments. I read all of them. So, after 30 days, what's the final verdict? Is honey healthier than sugar? The answer is a very qualified yes. It is a slight edge. It does have tiny amounts of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that you won't find in table sugar. Its lower average glycemic index gives it a gentler effect on blood sugar. And some research suggests it might have small, positive effects on cholesterol. For me, that sleep discovery was a powerful personal finding. But let's be perfectly clear, this does not make honey a health food, it is still sugar. A tablespoon of honey actually has more calories and more sugar than a tablespoon of table sugar. The benefits we're talking about are marginal. They're real, but they are small. Honey isn't some magic fix for your health. It's a slightly better choice in a diet that strictly limits all added sugars. My experiment taught me something really important. The question, is honey healthier than sugar, is the wrong question. It makes it sound like we should be picking one to eat all the time. The real lesson is that we should be cutting back on all added sugars, period. Those guidelines from the American Heart Association. That's not a target to aim for, it's a hard upper limit. And most of us blow past it without even knowing. 
Choosing raw honey over table sugar is a good move. It's a step in the right direction. It gives you a tiny nutritional leg up and, maybe, helps you sleep a bit better. But it is a very, very small step. The giant leap for your health is cutting back on your overall sugar intake. So, while honey might not be a superfood, picking it over sugar is one of those small, better choices. And sometimes, it's all those little choices added together that make the biggest difference.